All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to another edition of At Home Learning with your old buddy, uh, Mr. Norris. We have a good one in store for this week. We are going to be talking about mission and absorption. Um, ultimately, what we're going to be getting to is what you see behind you, which is how fireworks actually end up working. And when we're talking about emitting and absorbing, the things that we are absorbing and emitting are actually gonna be light. So we're going back into the realm of talking about light. And this is a pretty cool one, okay? Um, this video shouldn't be too long, and there's no math. So everything should be pretty straightforward. All right, so let's dive into it. So think about you standing on a ladder, all right? When you are standing up on a ladder, if you are not moving, my question is, what kind of energy do you have? If you take a second and think, you will remember that you have potential energy, right? You have the potential to fall, because gravity is gonna bring you back down, okay? If you wanted to decrease the amount of potential energy you had, right, well, you would have to climb down the ladder, all right? If you wanted to increase the amount of potential energy you had, you would have to climb up the ladder, okay? Because the higher you are, the longer you're gonna fall, right? The other thing we're looking at here is this idea of stability, okay? Where are you more stable? Are you more stable closer to the ground or higher up on the ladder? And obviously, if you've ever been on a ladder, you know that you are much less stable the higher you go. So kind of keep that in mind, okay? When you're closer to the ground, okay? You have less energy because you fall less if you trip, as opposed to being 100 feet up on a ladder. If you fall from there, you're gonna create lots of energy because you're very high up on the ground and you're not considered stable. All right, so what we're gonna be looking at are electrons in atoms. So you remember atoms are the little things that make up everything. The middle of an atom is its nucleus, okay? That is what determines what that element is. So uh, if you have one proton, your hydrogen, if you have two protons, your helium, three protons, your lithium, and so on and so on. The electrons are very small and they're on the outside of an atom, okay? And as we've seen them, they can jump from one atom to the other, create electricity. We can see them spin, which is what creates magnetism. And today, we are gonna see them absorb energy and spit it back out, okay? So, in an electron, what you have to realize is that we've seen this model before. If you remember, this is called the Bohr's model of an atom, and it's not 100% accurate as to what an atom actually looks like, but for today, this makes what we're gonna do really easy. So we're gonna stick with it, okay? Here you'll see that we have these orbits, right? Okay? These orbits start close to the nucleus and move farther and farther out, all right? The orbit that is closest to the middle of the nucleus, we call the ground state, okay? This is like being on the flat ground, okay? The closer you are to the nucleus, the more stable you are, okay? The less energy you have. It's like being on the ground. You don't have a lot of energy. But as you get away from the nucleus and you go into these higher orbitals, okay? You are now becoming, uh, you're gaining energy. Right? You're going up the ladder. The higher up the ladder you are, the more potential energy you have. But because you have more potential energy, all right, that means that you are less stable. All right? And like us, electrons do not like to be unstable. It's not a good feeling for them. All right? So electrons want to be as close to the nucleus as possible, pretty much at all times. All right? So what do we see here? The higher the orbit, the more energy it has and the less stable the atom is. And excited electrons, okay, want to jump back down and become stable. So again, we've seen this model a bunch of times. Uh, here we have uh, an element that has six electrons in it. And over here we have an element that has a ton, probably like 60 or 70 electrons and protons and neutrons in it. This is true for all elements and all atoms that we're gonna talk about. Okay, so how does an electron go from one orbital whoop, to the next? How do we jump from the ground state up, right? Well, the way you have to do that is you have to get energy. And in this case, we call that absorption, okay? So here's what we see. Here we have the nucleus of an atom. Here is our electron, 
okay? Our electron starts off at the ground state. It's just hanging out, minding its own business, okay? But then all of a sudden, what happens is a beam of light comes and shines on the atom, right? The electron is able to absorb some of that light, okay? Remember, light has no mass, but it's full of energy, okay? That's what light is, it's little packets of energy, okay? The electron is able to absorb some of that energy, and when it does that, it's like you drinking a Mountain Dew, all right? Taking a five shot uh, espresso from Starbucks, just sculling it. You gain energy. The electron is gaining that light's energy. And when it does, it jumps up to a more excited state. It gets farther away from the nucleus because it has more energy, all right? This is called absorption, okay? So again, the electron absorbs light Okay, and remember, we call that a photon, and all a photon is, is a unit of light, right? The electron becomes super excited, okay? And it moves up to a higher level. So it jumps from the low level boop, up to the higher level. And here, you can even see the photon. This is your light, okay? This light is orange, this light is red. And you'll see the lights are different colors. That'll be important here in a second. But let's start slow. If an electron absorbs energy, it gets more excited and goes up a level, okay? Which means the opposite is true. So if you remember, electrons, like you and I, do not want to live at the top of the ladder, okay? We go up there, do what we need to do. I need to go back down to my ground state. Electrons need to do the same. So, when an electron wants to jump back down a level, okay, it has to get rid of that energy. Okay, and we call this emission. To emit means to send off, to get out of you, all right? So the only way that the electron can get down a level is by getting rid of that energy that got it excited in the first place. And that energy was light. So the way that an electron can jump down a level is by spitting that light back out. And if you notice, this light is still red and this light is still orange. Okay, come back to that in just a second. So again, we return to the ground state by getting rid of that light energy, okay? And the energy of the photon that is emitted, okay, is the difference between the two. And again, I said I wasn't gonna do a lot of math today, but this amount of energy is very important, okay? And like I said, the fact that this light is orange and this light is red is really, really important. That's because, okay, Every element has a different configuration of electrons, right? Like we saw earlier, okay, all of their electrons are in different areas. And what that means is that all elements, okay, one electron will absorb one color, while another electron will absorb another color, okay? They need certain frequencies of energy, okay? So put pause on that. Let's talk about why this is important. Have you ever thought about the fact that we know what the sun is made of. We know the elements that are inside of the sun, right? How do we know that? The sun is tens of thousands of degrees on its surface. We'll never probably be able to go there physically and scoop up some of that sun. So how do we know what it is made of? How do we know what stars that are hundreds of millions of light years away from here are made out of, okay? And the reason is, is because these emissions and absorptions are unbelievably useful, okay? So let's see how we use this. To understand why this is important, we have to go back and talk about our old buddy, the prism, okay? So simply put, if you remember what's happening here, white light is shining straight and true, and then it hits that prism, and if you remember, the light slows down, right? Light goes fastest when there's no atoms in its way. So when the light hits a solid, like the prism, it slows down. There's more atoms together in the solid. This is called refraction. It bends. The light is special because when light slows down, not only does it bend, but it also spreads. And this is called dispersion. And that's why we see our rainbow. We see all of the colors of light. And it's important to remember that the only difference between red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet is their frequencies, okay? If you remember, if you don't, this would be a good thing to write down, 
the color with the highest frequency is violet, and the color with the lowest frequency is red. Okay? That's because red has a really long wavelength, okay? so it has a low frequency. And violet has a really high wavelength, okay? so it has a really high frequency. Or sorry, it has a really short wavelength, so it has a really high frequency. Okay, so again, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the light spread out. So, you can watch these videos. I've included these. There's a great Bill Nye video that's going to explain all of this. So, if my explanation is not sufficient, please watch this video. But I'm going to try to do my best here. All right, so here's what we got. Here, we have a light source. In this case, this is a sun or a star. Here, we have one atom with one electron in it. If you remember what an atom with one electron is, this is hydrogen. So, here, the atom, uh, the electron of the atom starts off in its ground state, right? It's closest to the nucleus, and then this light comes at it. Watch what happens. This electron sucks up the color orange, okay? And only the color orange, okay? Because different electrons suck up different colors, okay? In this example, when the light comes out of the sun, Okay, this electron absorbs the color orange. And when it does that, it gains energy from the light. Whoop, and it jumps up a level. But then, whoop, it spits it out and jumps back down. Okay, we're going to watch it one more time together. Okay, here we have our ground state electron. Light comes out of the sun. Do it again. Okay. This electron absorbs the frequency of orange light, which means the orange light is sucked up and then spat out, and then it sucks it up again, jumps up, spits it out again, jumps back down, okay? Emission or absorption is when it sucks the light up, it gets excited, it has all that light energy, but then it can't handle being up at that higher level, right, it's in its ground state right now, it sucks up that light energy, oh, it's all jacked up on caffeine, and then it poof, spits that light back out so it can jump back down. Emission, absorption, and the reason this is important because if we look at light coming from, let's say, our sun, if we put that light and turn it into a full continuous spectrum, and all that means is this is a complete and total rainbow, okay, as the light is going through the gas of the sun, the elements, the atoms that make up the sun are sucking up. They're absorbing some of the color that's coming out. Right? The atoms inside of the sun can absorb the frequency of certain colors of light. And what scientists have figured out is that every element, every type of atom, has its own spectrum. For example, here, these are what we call our emission spectrums. These are the colors that are spat out okay, when the electrons jump back down. So in this case, sodium. Okay, when its electrons go from a high level to a low level, the color it spits out is yellow. Okay? Lithium, on the other hand, spits out red and yellow and blue and purple in these particular frequencies. Right? But we also see this is the absorption spectrum. This is the continuous spectrum for lithium. And notice the colors that get sucked up, these are backwards, so it's kind of hard to see. But look at this. You have this purple and this purple and this blue and this blue. Look at that. Purple, purple, blue, blue. They're all sucked out the same. See that orange right there? That came from right there. There's a little bit of red that's missing from this one. But they're like two pieces of a puzzle that go together perfectly. When light goes through lithium, okay, that continuous spectrum, when it goes through a lithium atom, okay, that lithium atom's electrons suck up these colors. They get excited, they jump up a level, okay? But then when they're really excited, they need to jump back down a level, so they spit out those exact same colors. This is how we know what stars are made out of. This is how we know what our sun is made out of. It's because we're able to use these spectrums. It's pretty cool, right? So again, what you notice here, okay, uh, I think this is lithium again. It's a great example, right? Here's your absorption spectrum. This is what it looks like when you take the energy out of the light, okay? The atom sitting there minding its own business, its electron sucks up that energy, and that energy is these specific frequencies. When it jumps back down, it spits out those exact same frequencies. Okay? 
The science of studying light uh, is called spectroscopy. Okay? What you're looking at is a spectrum. You're studying the spectrum and you're studying which bits of the spectrum each element is able to absorb. Um, again, this works. The reason we have spectroscopy, and this is important, is because every element has its own distinct electron configuration. Okay. Every element, whether it's helium or iron or uh, manganese or whatever you're looking at, the, all of their electrons have a different shape. And because of that, electrons from different elements need different amounts of energy to be excited. Those different frequencies of energy are exactly the same as the frequencies of light that they absorb. Okay. So again, just so you keep seeing it, this is an emission spectrum. This is an absorption spectrum. And again, I keep using lithium here as our example. All right? It's pretty cool. So emission spectrums, how does this work? What happens is you have, okay, you have this high energy level and you have this low energy level. When an electron jumps from a high energy level to a low energy level, it loses energy. It goes down. That lost energy is light that it spits out. Okay? So what we have here. Right. Uh, an excited electron drops to a lower state. It loses a what we call a discrete, and all this word means this is a great SAT word. It means specific. A discrete amount means you know it's not it's not 1.5, it's not 1.7, it's exactly 1.6. It's a discrete specific amount. Okay. The emitted photons have a specific color, which is the same as the energy that they absorb, and we can use spectroscopes to analyze those colors and tell you. That star right there, it's made up of 95% helium and 4% hydrogen, or whatever it is. Again, emission spectrums look like this. Okay, emission spectrums are the ones that have more black uh, and less color in them, because only a small sliver of light is emitted when the electron jumps down. Again, you have hot gas, okay, light goes through the gas, goes through a prism, and then we can see it. Absorption spectrums are the opposite. Okay, absorption spectrums are the whole continuous spectrum and just those little slivers of color that the electrons are absorbing. Okay? What happens here is you have white light has all of the colors. That pure white light goes through a gas and each type of gas absorbs different frequencies. All right? And again, this is what we can see through. So again, you have a light source. Oh. You have a light source, you have a cold gas, the light goes through the gas, which goes through the spectrum, which goes here. I'm sorry, I said something wrong. I don't know if you caught this. In an emission spectrum, we start off with a hot gas, and that hot gas is already emitting. So this gas is already heated, it's already absorbed light, and now it's spitting it back out. So the light's coming straight from the gas. That was really more for me. But if that helps you, good. Okay, spectroscopy. Again, it uses white light, the white light is scattered into all of its different wavelengths. We make a rainbow, and when we see what piece of the rainbow a certain atom absorbs, that's how we know what it is. So let me show you examples here. Okay, you can think of this spectroscopy is almost like um, there's like a fingerprint to every single atom, to every single element. So here are three examples, and I know this might be kind of hard to read. Here are the emission spectrums for helium, hydrogen, sodium, and lithium. Okay, you'll see. It's all black, but they have certain colors here. And these are, obviously there's no color here, this is black and white, but the lines are in the right place. Okay, your reds would be over here, your blues and purples would be over there, but all we care about is where the line is. Okay? So here, we have a mystery spectrum. Okay? If we see light that looks like this coming out of a star, well you just match it up. So let's look. Here, I have these two lines right here. We'll go up, which element has those two lines in the spectrum? Huh. Sodium, okay? So we know that this element has sodium in it, but it also has these two lines. Which element has these two lines? Well, they're right there. That'd be lithium. So the gas that we're seeing is made up of sodium and lithium. Ta-da! You just identified what a star is made out of. Let's do it again. All right, so take a second. You can pause the video if you want to play along. Look at this. And you can see here. So we have these two lines here. Go up. Where do we see these two lines? Up, 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 up. I see those in hydrogen. Let's double check. We got these two lines. We got that line right there. Good. We got one, two, three. All right. So all of the lines in hydrogen are there. I know hydrogen is in my gas. What else is there? 
Well, I see, let's see here, what else do we have? Well, we got this little line right here. Where do we see this line? Oh, we got that right there. And this line is right there. So I know there's lithium. This is hydrogen and lithium. That's our mystery gas. Last but not least, ooh, we got a bunch. So let's look at this. We have these two lines at the end, so that's got to be our hydrogen. We got those two. Got that one. Good. We have this one all by itself. That means we have to have helium. So here we have hydrogen and helium. Ta da! All right, so that is it for this week. Uh, I'm going to be on Zoom all during the week if you guys have any questions. Um, there's a DOL that's going to be on quizzes. I'm going to be posting that. And email me. Uh, yeah, okay. Hope you guys have a great week. All right.